morning, everyone. Um, welcome to another edition of Symmetry in Newcastle. Our first year, or sorry, our first speaker of the year, uh, 2021, is Francois Lemate, and he'll be talking for all about dense totipotence free groups in full groups. All right. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the invitation. I'm actually very glad to to be here and um, uh, in this uh, seminar in, in Australia. So um, also, uh, I like uh, the fact that your, your group uh, has a website called uh, zero dimensional group dot group. So um, actually, uh, zero dimensional groups will make a brief appearance. They will not be locally compact, though. And um, OK, so let's start. So uh, yeah, I'm realizing that I forgot to to take my notes. Sorry, that's, yeah, I, was telling me uh, sometimes you, you have to, to edit the videos, this part, you, you, you don't have to keep it, you know. OK, so uh, what I will be talking about is uh, related to uh, dynamics uh, in the measurable world and actually uh, what's called uh, probability measure preserving actions, which I will just write as uh, PMP. So PMP actions, uh, what are they? What do I want to look at? Uh, so X mu, for me, it will be a standard probability space. So that means that uh, it's not any probability space. It's actually a very nice one. It's isomorphic to the interval 0, 1 with the Lebesgue measure. In particular, uh, it is atomless, OK? Um, and there's a result that tells you that as soon as you have a complete separable metric space and you put a non-atomic uh, probability measure on it, then you get uh, actually a standard probability space. So there are many uh, probability spaces like this, but uh, I mean, that you can produce, but they are all isomorphic. And this is nice because we want to make groups act on them. So it's, it's nice to have different spaces to, to look at. OK, so uh, all, all that I will say will be uh, up to measure 0. And of course, I will try to, to say it. But sometimes I will forget. And yeah, I should say right away also, uh, feel free to, to ask questions. Uh, I, I'm not sure how familiar you are with uh, this doing things in the I mean probability measure preserving actions and, and also really feel free to ask questions anytime. Um, okay, everything is up to measure zero and uh, every set. Each time I look at a, a set, uh, every I mean I would say actually everything is measurable. So all the maps that I will look at, they will be measurable. So all the sets that I will look at, they will be measurable. And so I say this right away so, so that I don't have to write it down afterwards. OK. So um, let's see. So uh, also, yeah, one more bit of notation. I will have gamma. For me, it will always be a countable group, a fixed countable group. Uh, so that's it with notation. And now the, the main definition, this, these are the, the objects that we'll be looking at, is PMP actions. So a PMP action of gamma is uh, an action on X. Uh, so I should say it's a PMP action on X mu. So it is an action on X, which again is measurable it's by measurable bijections and well what does it mean to be measure preserving it just means that for every a in x subset of x for every gamma in gamma the measure of a is equal to the measure of gamma a okay and sometimes we will write them as just gamma acting on x mu. 
And sometimes I will want to specify what the actual, I mean, I will want to give a name to the action and I will call it alpha or beta. I will give it, give it uh, Greek names. But uh, okay, so that's a PMP action. <clears throat> um, and uh, there are two basic properties that such actions can have. And so the first one is the most relevant to, to this talk. Uh, actually, it's negation will be the very relevant for this talk. So my action, my PMP action is free. If for every non-trivial element, uh, when, I, when I look at the measure of the set of fixed points, x in x such that gamma x is equal to x uh, this is equal to zero okay and i guess all of you are familiar what, with what uh, what is a free action in in general so you can also think of this as just um you can find actually a full measure subset of the the space which is gamma invariant and when you restrict to this full measure subset, the action becomes free. Okay, you just take the intersection of this, uh, of the complements of these sets that I wrote down here. Okay. And uh, the second important feature uh, is called ergodicity. Uh, so this means that whenever I take a subset, if gamma a is equal to a, in other words, if, gamma, uh, if a is gamma invariant, then the measure of a is equal to zero or one. Okay, so, uh, and one remark that I want to make, which, I mean, it will appear at some point and I prefer to, to, to do it right now. So every ergodic action So it's, okay, it's, it may not be a free action, but okay, yeah, also I should say every time, I mean, I said gamma is a countable uh, group, I should say that it's infinite. Otherwise, actually it does not have any ergodic action. And this is actually the point of the right. So every ergodic action has only infinite orbits. And I mean, if you've never seen this, the, the, the point is just that if you had some finite orbit somewhere with, with, so when I say only it's up to measure zero here, but if I had a positive measure set uh, where I had finite orbits, I could use the fact that uh, my standard probability space, I can think of it as the interval. And on the interval, I have a natural total order, the, the usual total order on the reals. And then I could pick, pick a point in every orbit I could uh, take, I mean, in every finite orbit, I could take the minimum, um, the minimum of this orbit uh, and this set of minimums, then I could cut it in two and uh, take its saturation and that would contradict uh, ergodicity. So ergodic actions, they have only infinite orbits. And when you uh, look at this uh, for uh, gamma being just the, uh, uh, the group of uh, the, the integer group. Uh, what does this say? Well, this says that uh, all ergodic action are free. because it has, this group has only one way of having an, an infinite orbit. It has only one transitive action uh, with an infinite orbit, which is its action on itself by, by left transaction. Okay, so again, this, this will come up uh, later. Uh, but right now you can forget about it. Um, okay, so here are some examples. So the first is for gamma is equal to being equal to Z. 
uh, it's called the irrational rotation. So what is the space? The model space is, it's almost the space that we, that I told you about. And since we are looking at things up to measure zero, it does not really matter that I just removed the point one. Mu is still the Lebesgue Le measure. And I pick an angle alpha irrational. And OK, uh, maybe I'll call it actually theta, because alpha is for my, my actions. And how do I act on the space? Well, I have with, I mean, my group is Z, so it's generated by a single element. So I just need to, to, to state how this element is, is acting. So, and this is just well by, by translation with angle uh, theta. So it's x plus theta modulo one. Okay, and if you think of x really as the, as the circle, uh, then you're just taking a, an irra irrational rotation on a, on a circle. Okay, so this is actually ergodic. Okay. And this is uh, why, I mean, irrationality is what gives you uh, ergodicity. Uh, okay, and here I can has to be a free action since it's a Z action. And the other example, which tells us already that, I mean, looking at PMP actions, it's something non-vacuous to do for gamma accountable infinite uh, group. So my space here becomes zero one to the gamma. Um, and mu is now the Lebesgue measure to the gamma. And so um, my action is, so I think of elements in there as functions and the action then becomes the following. I have my function F and I want to, I push it by gamma and I want to say what, what's its value at G and this is F of gamma inverse G. <clears throat> and I mean, the first time you see this, you, you might be actually uh, unsettled by the, the presence of this gamma inverse. Um, but you should not because you're really shifting things in the, in the right direction. Meaning that if you, for instance, take Z and you think of elements of Z01 to the gamma as, well, uh, things where uh, you have some random, so you have this integral line and it's decorated with elements of Z01, which are random. Then uh, what your generator is doing is really pushing this picture uh, to the, to the, to the right. So here I should have written down the, the integers. And here I have this uh, elements of the interval uh, zero one. So you should, if you've never seen it, seen it, sorry, you should really check that this is the, the natural way to write this, this action. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is the Bernoulli action. And uh, so it is free. And why is that? Well, just let's look at what happens for, for, uh, for Z, but the same argument works for, for every group. The point is just that if you, um, so you're, you're shifting your function, but your function it's uh, with probability one, it's only taking um, different values. So then your, your element uh, cannot fix uh, any point. So that's one thing. And the second thing uh, is that it is ergodic. This I won't explain, but it's a very classical argument. It's, it's not hard. Uh, but the good thing is that this tells us that at least for uh, any countable infinite group, we have one uh, free uh, ergodic action. And again, ergodicity here, um, it uses the fact that, that my acting group is infinite. It's not true for, for a finite group, again, because a finite group, it would have, I mean, you cannot have infinite orbits. Okay, so, 
so as I said, the point uh, of my talk would, would be to study somehow non-free actions, but uh, non-free actions of a very specific uh, group, uh, which is the, the free group. But okay, for now, I still want to, uh, uh, I still have to give you one uh, important definition. Uh, so to every uh, PMP action, And here I want to give it a name. We associate uh, what's called a PMP equivalence relation. Oh, I should call it rather the PMP equivalence relation uh, of the action. R alpha, so it's just a way of saying I want to look at the partition of the space into orbits. So what what is so that's the name of the equivalence relation, and so we say that two points are related uh, if there is an element of the group which takes x uh, to y. Two elements x and y are related. In other words, if they are in the same orbit. Okay, so um, so that's. I mean, you can take this as a definition for what is a PMP equivalence relation. A PMP equivalence relation would be an equivalence relation on my space X, which does come from an action like that. And actually, one can axiomatize uh, in a nice way what what these are. But for this talk, it's it's not relevant. So, as I said, uh, alpha encodes the partition of the space into orbit. Okay, and so there's, okay, usually, I mean, I mean, usually I'm uh, a lot of people study uh, PMP actions, especially Z actions, PMP Z actions, um, up to what's called conjugacy, which means that you can identify the spaces and then you really have the same action. And there's this other domain of orbit equivalence, where here you're really only looking at this partition of the space into orbits. So I, I don't, don't want to say much about orbit equivalence, which is why I don't define it. I just want you to have in mind that what, what this object is, what, what is a PMP equivalence relation. And I'll give you just a, uh, as a motivating somehow a theorem, a result of Gaborio in this domain of orbit equivalence. But I will state it without uh, the name orbit equivalence. So it's the following. So I suppose that I have uh, an action of the free group on n generator. Uh, here I take n greater or equal than one. Uh, and the second one, n, n, n sorry. So two actions, alpha and beta, are free groups of a priori I mean, the ranks could be distinct. Uh, and I suppose that these are free actions, free, sorry, PMP actions. Then two things. I mean, so you have to assume something. You assume that they give you the same partition of the space into orbits. In other words, they give you the same equivalent solution. And here, really, you could, I mean, I'm writing this equality, but it's really up to measure zero. So I could really throw away a, a null set and have the, this equality for the restriction on this, on the complement of this measure zero set. And then still, I would have that uh, the, these two free groups have the same rank. So that's a very important theorem. It tells you that for free actions, this partition of the space into orbits, it uh, remembers the rank of your free group. It's a really a remarkable result. 
So it, it was proved in, in 2000. And it gave really a new impetus to this uh, whole theory of orbit equivalence. Uh, okay, and what I want to focus on in this talk is another theorem of his, which is really a, a sibling of, of the one that I just wrote down. Um, okay, let's see. I erased some stuff in my notes and what did I want to say? Okay. So now we want to consider actions with uh, where the, the groups of the do already have the, the same rank. <clears throat> okay. So I have this now, this free group on n generators Fn. Uh, and I want to take, sorry, two such PMP actions. And again, I want to have a look at what happens for actions which give me the same partition of the space into orbits, again, up to measure zero. Um, and the point is that alpha is free if and only if um, Beta is free. Okay, so uh, that's the um, that's the theorem that I want to focus on. Okay, so uh, let's just think about uh, what, what this means for for a second. So for n equals one, this is actually a triviality. Why? Um, because um, so uh, here I I really have z on on both sides. And I'm saying that, okay, uh, so I mean, really to prove this theorem, I, I only need to prove a uh, direct implication because I mean, the assumptions on, on alpha, I mean, alpha and beta play a completely symmetric role. So assume that I have a free Z action. Well, then this is completely encoded by the equivalence relation. This means just that the associated equivalence relation, uh, R alpha has only infinite classes. Okay, but if R alpha is equal to R beta, then the other the action beta must have infinite orbits. And what, what this means is just that this is uh, a Z action. Again, uh, the group Z has only one way of having an, an infinite orbit. It must act uh, freely uh, on it. Okay, so for N equal one, uh, this, is, this is trivial, but uh, for n uh, greater than 2, well, this is a theorem. I won't say anything about the proof, but this is where the, I mean, the point uh, of this is for n greater or equal than, uh, the, the, than 2. Okay, so what does this say also? It's, it says that for the free group on, let's say, two generators, I have this class of actions, these free actions, which is very rigid. I mean, the partition into of the space into orbits remembers that the action is free. So I can look at this uh, the other way around and just say that, well, since this is an equivalence, if the first group, I mean, the first Fn, the, sorry, the first action alpha is not free, then the second one has to be not free. Okay. And then the question then becomes, well, what, what can you say about, about this? What can you say about the, the quantitative features that uh, these non-free actions can have? So let me write this down as a, as a question. So I have this action uh, on X mu. And uh, now I will want to ask ergodicity. Uh, I'll first write down the, the question and then go back to why, why I want ergodicity. So the question is, what can we say of the actions beta
And more specifically, I will want to ask, uh, uh, in particular, how non-free, and this is really the, I mean, non-free actions are someone, I mean, a better title for, for, for my talk would be that really here we, we, want, we were studying non-free uh, PMP actions of the free group on range generators, how non-free can better be made. Okay, so right now it's not a precise question, and, but we'll see uh, various ways an action can, can be thought of as very uh, non-free. Um, okay, so let me just, yeah, uh, I wanted to explain why, why I want to ask ergodicity. Well, it's just because you could, okay, a non-free action could still have a free part. I mean, you could just, for instance, make something stupid by cutting your space into two pieces, having a free FN action on the first part and uh, something, I don't know, a trivial action on, on the other part. And I don't want to have uh, some uh, situations uh, like this. <clears throat> so this is why I restrict to ergodic actions. Okay. So now I can state uh, our main results. So yeah, I forgot to say this is joint work with Alessandro Carderi, Damien Gaborio, and, and Damien Gaborio. So what we proved is that, um, and what was uh, last year, um, so I take a non-free ergodic PMP action then there is another action beta such that two things hold uh, so which is so and I will have to define this, these terms, full and totipotent, such that um, R alpha is equal to R beta. Okay, and um, so that's our main result. And again, I will define the words here. Um, and but yeah, I will comment right away that, I mean, the main result of, of my thesis was actually just to show that the same statement, but uh, without uh, uh, totipotency. Okay. Okay. Uh, and okay, before defining those terms, so you could re you should really think of this as a very. Uh, th these are two notions, and we, we will see that which, which um, say that the, the actions are somewhat somehow uh, very rich dynamically, and um, I mean I think your your research group is called uh, uh, symmetries, in, I, I remember that's that's the word symmetry. And we see that these actions they are um, actually very very far from uh, being uh, symmetric. I mean, okay, if if you look at a free action of a countable group, it is somehow very symmetric because if you look at uh, the actions, I mean, the action on each orbit, and you look at the Schreier graph, you have the the Schreier graph of uh, a free action is just the the Cayley graph of, of your group. And so it's very symmetric. And here we'll see it's very non-symmetric. Uh, but I'll come back to, to this and, and, and the definition of, of uh, Schreier graphs. Uh, OK, so now I want to define this, these two notions. So the first is uh, fullness. OK, so and yeah, OK, this one actually, uh, it helps allows me to hide under the rug this, this notion of full group that 
I did not define, but which is in the title, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but so let, let's see what, what this is. So gamma acting on X mu is full if whenever I take A1, AN, uh, subsets of X, uh, and I want them to be pairwise disjoint. And whenever I take gamma 1, gamma n in gamma such that gamma 1 a1, gamma n a n are disjoint. And finally, for every epsilon uh, strictly positive, I can find an element of the group such that for every i from 1 to n, the measure. So what I would like to say is that act, uh, gamma is acting uh, exactly like the gamma i is restricted to a i. But this is not exactly true. I have to put an epsilon there. And uh, what I get is that this is Okay, uh, I should put different, and then this is less than epsilon. So let me uh, let me picture uh, put a, put a picture. I mean, let me draw two big uh, potatoes, and we have a one, a two, uh, etc. A n, and the point is that uh, each time. So it's to use colors so i have so this is x on both sides and so now um, these guys they are taken to different places but still taken to different things and okay i write down this one as well And maybe, I mean, a good way to think about this is that AIs, uh, maybe you want to think about them as almost being a partition of the space. Like maybe you want them to cover the space up to up, up to some epsilon, but, but it's okay. The, the, the point is just that they are sent to disjoint things. But, uh, uh, and, and the thing is that you can now find a gamma, which basically adds like this gamma i's, except, I mean, restricted to the AIs, except uh, each time on a, a set of, of, of measure uh, epsilon. Okay. And so if, if you know what a full group is, uh, this is exactly what uh, this means that the action is dense in uh, that alpha of gamma is dense in the full group of R alpha. Uh, but I really want to view this as a kind of a dynamical property, this, this fullness uh, condition. Okay, so let me give you two examples of full actions. Okay. Uh, I will just, the first one, I, I don't want to uh, elaborate. So I will just say it's for those who know what, what it is. You, you, you take a topological full group, you take an invariant measure uh, on your Cantor space, uh, then the topological full group is actually uh, acting uh, fully with respect to this invariant measure that, that you that you that you started with. It's, it's a good exercise if, so if you know what the topological full group is. And the real ex uh, example that um, I want to develop, I mean, I won't explain why, why it's full, but I will explain what the example is, uh, is the following thing. Uh, so it's, let's call this an example of a full PMP uh, F2 action. Um, so, 
so it's, I mean, uh, uh, providing actions of the free group is always the easiest thing to do because you, you only have to, I mean, if you think of an action on the set, then you just have to give yourself two permutations. So here, I only need to give myself two measure preserving uh, bijections. Um, so uh, I just need to specify what the two generate, how the two generators are acting. So X again is zero one. I took, I take alpha irrational and actually here, I want to take it not too big. So it's in zero one half minus Q. And so, ah, sorry, again, I should call it theta. So alpha of A of X is still this irrational rotation. So it's X plus theta modulo one. And so really, yeah, I'll draw this actually with, with a circle. And I have this angle um, theta. And this is, I mean, um, A is acting by, by rotation uh, with this angle. So that's one thing. And the second uh, thing, it's something, um, so the, the second element, it, it will actually be, a, be an involu acting as an involution. So this won't be a faithful uh, F2 action. So for this, actually, I have uh, some choice. So you pick some, mm, yeah, um, sorry. Actually here, I could have taken anything. Uh, it's the, the, the restriction is on beta. And here, I remove Q and I also remove uh, alpha Q. I want it to be rationally independent from, uh, uh, sorry, here I should put a plus. I want it to be rationally independent from uh, from, uh, from alpha. Um, I fix this beta and okay, here let's say I have the, uh, my zero. And what I will do is, so alpha of B of x, it will be equal to different things depending on where x is. So it will be uh, x plus theta modulo one, actually to be on the, sorry, to be on the safe side, let's still ask this here as well. So it's x plus theta uh, modulo, um, uh, modulo one. So it's really acting as A if X is in the interval zero beta. It's X minus theta modulo one if X is in the interval alpha plus beta, sorry, alpha, sorry, it's not alpha, it's theta, um, theta, theta plus beta, and it's not doing anything otherwise. So let's say that this was exactly my, my angle theta. What am I doing? I picked this small interval uh, here. So here I have beta, which is rationally independent from theta. It is taken by uh, this first, this irrational rotation, it takes it here. And so what my second guy is doing is really just exchanging these two intervals using this irrational rotation. So here it acts by sh shifting by the angle theta and here it wants to go back. So it shifts by minus theta. Okay. So you see here that I have um, I, I have defined a PMP uh, F2 action, no problem, but uh, it's not a faithful um, F2 action. It's, it's an action of, of, of a quotient of F2. Uh, and this is something that I should have said when I told you uh, about our main result. Uh, what's a typical example of a non-free ergodic action uh, of Fn? 
which you can put in, in this theorem. It's just, well, you take an n generating group, which is not free, and you make it act by this Bernoulli shift, which I defined before. And now you can also view this as an Fn action. And the point of our theorem is that then you can build an other Fn action, which is somehow very rich. And we will see it's very far from this original action. Or already you can see that this totipotency business, it's, um, it's not going to be satisfied by, by this Bernoulli shift uh, thing, uh, Bernoulli shift of the quotient. Uh, I mean, an action like this, uh, it's clear that, uh, that it, it cannot be free because, yeah, so uh, maybe I should have said that. So let me go back to this definition. Um, uh, so quick comment, sorry. Such an action cannot be free. And the reason is you can just take gamma one to be equal to the trivial element. And I mean, I won't elaborate on, on this, um, but I mean, you want to say that the action is, is non-trivial. Um, uh, you just take an element A1 and you pick another element A2, disjoint from it, and then you will have an element of your group which acts trivially on A1, and you have this gamma 2 which was taking A2 somewhere else, and you have, if you took epsilon small enough, then you will see that this action is not free. I mean, sorry, this is a bit quick, but I should have stated that right away. Um, okay. So, uh, okay, so Mark's uh, theorem uh, is that uh, alpha is full. Okay, good. So, uh, as I mean, I told you here that uh, these actions are not free. I will tell you something much stronger. So again, recall that our main theorem is that if we start with a non-free action of the free group, we can, without changing with the orbits, we can turn it into a, a full uh, action. And uh, okay, here is one nice consequence of this is that the action is what's called uh, totally uh, non-free. So what does it mean? It means that, so it's a definition to be, which is due to Vashik. It's a very important definition, I think. Uh, it means that the map um, um, Uh, the map, the stabilizer map is injective. So this is just a, a subgroup of gamma, the, the stabilizer for the action of, of a point X. And let me just remind you, I'm sure you all know, but this is just space of gamma such that gamma dot X is equal to, to X, okay? so. The PMP action is totally non-free when this map is injective. And here again, I allow myself to throw away a null set. So it may not be injective really on the whole set, but if I remove a null set, it, it becomes injective. Okay. Um, and so, um, uh, so, okay, that's that's a nice notion. Um, let's see, uh, let me just explain to you why Mark's action at least is, so I, I won't give, I mean, my ex example of this will be Mark's action. I can tell you why it is uh, totally non-free. So one way of thinking about it, the, the good way actually of thinking about it in, in, in our context is that in other words, what does it, this mean that this injectivity it means that for every x different from y in, in my space, there exists an element of the group such that 
the support of alpha of gamma. Yeah, here I gave a name to the actions. Let's stick with that. Uh, contains x, but uh, so, sorry, uh, it's not exactly that. It contains x. This is not equivalent to y being in the support of alpha of gamma. So it, it tells the two points apart. So the support, let me remind you that this is just a set of points which are moved. Uh, so, <clears throat> so this means that supports uh, of elements tell, uh, uh, I mean, supports uh, tell elements of the space apart. Okay, and I mean, this is just very easy to see. This, this is saying just that, um, well, okay, let's say that for instance, the support of alpha of gamma contains X, then this means that the stabilizer of X does not contain gamma. And this means that the, and this says that uh, the, the stabilizer of Y does contain gamma if this is not an equivalent. Um, so, okay, so this is the good way of thinking of, of, of this is again, that supports, they tell points apart. <clears throat> and now let's see why, uh, why a Mark's action. So maybe I'll write it down here. Um, uh, so why is uh, Mark's action totally non-free? Well, the point is just that um, we'll use the support of this second element and the fact that the B, when I conjugate it by A, what this does to the support is just uh, shifting um, these two intervals by uh, an angle theta. And now the point is just that, uh, actually here, I don't need to throw away an offset. Uh, if I choose my power of uh, theta uh, correctly, and I have my two points, uh, uh, X and Y, which are distinct, I can always uh, shift things, uh, shift this interval so that the, this union of this, 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 sorry, union of two intervals so that let's say Y uh, is in, in this uh, disjoint uh, union, uh, but, uh, but uh, X is not just by uh, choosing my, uh, my angle theta, uh, my power uh, carefully enough. And again, uh, once I've done this, I just argue that if I conjugate now by this power of A, I get an element of the group whose support contains Y, but does not contain X. So this action is totally non-free. And the fact that um, fullness implies total non-freeness is something that I observe uh, in uh, um, and I should also say that, okay, so let me go back to our, our result. Uh, in, uh, so Bowen in 14 also, he had this statement uh, that if you take a non-free ergodic action of Fn, you can find an action beta, which is so same statement, uh, but beta is totally non-free. And I'm running out of time, so I, I won't go into details, but uh, let me just mention that uh, for those who know what an invariant random subgroup is, the point of this defi of Verschik's definition is, is that it, this tells you that Every PMP um, action non-free of the free group, it actually comes from a PMP ergodic action. Uh, sorry, for, it is actually an, an invariant random subgroup of the free group on uh, which was Bowen's uh, motivation for this. Okay, so another nice consequence of uh, fullness is high transitivity.
So yeah, I, I'm not sure uh, how much time do, do I still have? Uh, well, it started a bit late, so say five minutes. Okay. So, okay, so I, I'll be very brief then about this high transitivity. So, uh, so theorem, Eisenman and Glasner. Every full action so is highly transitive onto almost every orbit. So high transitivity is a feature of well transitive actions and the point is just that if you give me a uh, finitely supported permutation of this uh, this uh, countable set, then I can actually find an element of the group which acts exactly like that uh, finitely supported uh, permutation. And another way of saying this and it's just that uh, alpha, so let, let's call it alpha, alpha of gamma, so for almost every x, alpha of gamma is dense in the following zero dimensional uh, group, uh, the symmetric group over uh, the gamma orbit of x. So here I, put, I should put, uh, uh, I, I restrict it to the orbit. This is another way of thinking of this uh, high transitivity. And well, actually uh, a stronger statement uh, is true. Um, you can really make this a, a global statement, but I won't go into that because I, I really want to give you the, the definition of totipotency. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> but you can see already, um, I mean, uh, this high transitivity tells you already that when you restrict to an orbit, the action is also totally non-free. I mean, if you can imitate any uh, any finitely supported permutation, then you can definitely tear apart uh, distinct points. Um, <clears throat> and I should say, yeah, uh, so uh, you, you want to imitate it, uh, this finitely supported permutation only on its support. You cannot uh, have your group act as the identity everywhere else, but it's only on, on finite set. Okay, um, so definition. So again, as before, this is, this totipotency is a priori a definition in the for transitive actions, transitive FN action over an infinite set. is totipotent if its Schreier graph uh, contains all the balls of all, I mean, I should say, I mean, if I might read this, balls of all uh, Schreier graphs uh, of transitive FN actions over infinite set. So uh, the Schreier graph, let me just uh, remind you what, what it is. So you put a, a graph structure on your, uh, on, your, on, on your set. Let me make you equal in T. So vertices, sorry, the vertices, so of 
let's say gamma t minus z z are uh, elements of z and you put an edge labeled ai so yeah i had my free loop on n generators and i I choose the, the canonical uh, n generators, and and you have an edge labeled A i from z to alpha A i. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's a, a directed graph. Um, okay, so and uh, and this, as you can see, can it completely encodes the the alpha the action of your your free group on n generator. And so, uh, okay. Um, so again, let, let me maybe uh, pass the definition again. So, what what I mean is that so my totipotent action, what does it do? It tells me that if I take now an arbitrary action of the free group on n generators, and I restrict it to a finite ball, then I have an induced graph. Okay. And uh, this induced graph will appear somewhere as an induced graph um, in uh, the Schreier graph of my original action. Okay, so somehow it's an action which is an, an, the transitive action uh, over an infinite uh, set, which is um, um, which somehow contains all the possible dynamics on. Uh, on, uh, on finite sets. Um, okay, and just so a PMP action is totipotent. A PMP, so here it's an FN action. So there, there is a general uh, definition that actually we are not completely sure that it's the, the right one, so I don't want to, to give it here. If for almost every uh, x in x, uh, the gamma action uh, on the gamma orbit of x is totipotent. Okay, so, uh, okay, uh, just maybe, uh, can, can I just have two minutes to, to, to state to sure. very briefly, uh, Two consequences of totipotency. So uh, I did not hear an answer. So I guess it was a yes. I said sure. Door. <laughs> okay. Uh, so so two consequences. The first is faithfulness. And actually, even better, I claim that for every, so yeah, I, I, this, these consequences, uh, I will view them as consequences for the action that I have onto uh, almost every orbit. So uh, I would state this faithfulness condition for, for a transitive action. The point is that actually, so take uh, for every, okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, so take a transitive totipotent action. Uh, every action like this is faithful. And the stronger statement is that if I take gamma one, it's somehow dual to this high transitivity. If I take finitely many non-trivial elements, there exists a point which is moved simultaneously by these guys. So gamma i z is different from z for every i from one to n. Uh, so, so this, you could want to call this high faithfulness. And the second nice consequence is 
um, uh, non real realizability one cannot and and our x with a compact topology so that the action becomes minimal becomes a minimal action by by homeomorphisms so I'm being very vague here. Uh, let me just be a little more precise by saying that when I say endo x with a compact topology, I mean that I allow myself to throw away a null set and also then to add back another null set. And then I want to put on x a compact topology, which is still uh, metrizable, so that in the end I still have. I mean, uh, I still have the, the same, uh, I want to have the same set of measurable sets as before. And also I want to turn my action uh, into uh, an action by homeomorphisms. And this I can al always do. I can always find a compact model for my action so that it, it, it becomes an action by minimal, uh, sorry, that it becomes an action by homeomorphism. But this minimality condition, which means that all the, all, all the orbits are dense, I cannot achieve it. And this is in contrast with the following result, and I will end here. The following theorem of Weiss in uh, 2008. Every free PMP ergodic action action admits a free minimal model. Uh, actually, no. The point here is just that already it, it admits a, a minimal model. Actually, I'm, I'm not completely sure it, it's a... Uh, yeah, no, you, you can always... Uh, uh, No, no, you so so it's just admitting a minimal model, which means that again you can up to doing things up to measure zero, you can endow x with a with a compact topology, and then your action is by homeomorphisms and you want all the orbits to be dense. Okay, and so that's this non-realizability is a thing that we observed with, with Damien and, and Alessandro, which follows from work of Glasner and Weiss. And I will uh, stop here. Uh, sorry for going over time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Francois. Uh, do we have any short questions for our speaker? Well, does not seem like there are any questions or in the chat for that matter. So let's thank the speaker one more time. And Thanks. now it's time for a coffee break. Feel free to grab some beverage appropriate for your time zone i'm not going to judge if it's not coffee <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and yeah we can have a bit of a chat while the next speaker is getting ready <laughs>